Our next speaker, Charles Landry, is an international authority on the use of creativity in imagination in creating into cities the condition to enable people, individual, organization to approach and solve the problems in new, different ways. He's currently a fellow at the Robert Bosch Academy in Berlin, and we are happy to have him in a remote connection. Charles Landry, welcome to the F20. Hi, everybody. Great to see you. <laughs> Basically, we all know that 2020 was a year of radical reckoning and it caused deep reflection. And unfortunately, many hankered after the old normal and saw it as an exotic destination. But we all know that the deeper urgencies are coming with increasing force. And hopefully we realise that people are actually listening and that non-action is also an action. And we recognize that our economic order and way of life is materially expansive, socially divisive and environmentally hostile. Now, many people say you can't change the, your car whilst you're driving it, but we must, even though we also need to create a planet B whilst ameliorating planet A. So what drives transformation? I think crisis is incredibly helpful, and the pandemic showed that sometimes the impossible was possible, as you saw public administrations acting with vigour and in interesting ways. Secondly, we need encapsulating concepts. They're key. Clearly, once, uh, since sustainability was, perhaps it's losing energy, others coming up, gender equality, resilience, and all of that are important. And even the creative city, even though it's often been misused as an idea and you summarised what it's about very well. But these core ideas need energy to want people to make them want to act. And here language can be key. Do you call it climate crisis or climate collapse? The latter creates more intention. Thirdly, mission thinking can help if it can gather forces and interests, but it's increasingly rare, unfortunately, but hopefully will not be so in the future. And this is part of creating a compelling story where people see their role in making, shaping and co-creating their evolving environment. Now, Leuven in Belgium is a great example. It won the Capital of Innovation Award with its 2030 carbonization plan, decarbonization plan. It basically gave power away the local authority. It only controls 25%. The university sector has the other part. The business sector and the civic sector is the other parts. And there is a general assembly around there. And this is a powerful creative idea because it's giving away power for creative influence. Fourthly, what we need is a tangible project. And Carlos Romero Moreno talked about the 15-minute city. There's the super block in Barcelona, the one-minute city in Stockholm. Now, in essence, that idea already existed, but it's got an eco-twist. And that captured the imagination. And obviously, we know proximity is the key. Now, what we need to look at in terms of cities and elsewhere is the catalytic levers. And one of the few we've really got is public procurement, where $8 trillion are currently being procured. And this is a vast potential in order to shift the balance into the public interest. But I am worried, you know, when these changes. Last week, uh, Ferdinando Medina lost to Carlos Moreno in the Lisbon mayoral elections. And Fernando was very much into the eco principles and all of that. But people loved their cars too much and reacted against the bike lanes and more. So I'm also concerned about the Paris election soon, and I hope the, uh, Hidalgo wins. So it's all about risk. And so what I keep on asking myself, what generates political will and where can it happen? And clearly for me, it can happen in cities, but the relationship between cities and states need changing. We know that nation states have the legitimacy to manifest and deal with the rules and regulation system, but cities are, have great, uh, sorry, nation states have the authority, but cities have more legitimacy because they're closer to citizens. And it's easier there to engage people in the story, the aim, the intent, the vision, not a Grimm's fable, uh, to make these changes happen. 
And here organizations like the Global Parliament of Mayors, which I'm on the advisory board of, is really important because it's seeing a new deal, trying to make a new deal between cities and states, and essentially getting more resources for cities to make the changes actually happen, because, as I said, they're closer to citizens. But actually, the big challenge that we have in transformation is a cultural challenge. This is a cultural project. The biggest cultural project of our time is not on building an arts institutions in a city or an arts event. It is changing how we think, plan and act. People and places, how they think, plan and act. As it's about values, mindsets, attitudes and hearts and minds and skills. And this reminds me of the circular economy, which, of course, we want to shape in all of our cities. And it's great that we're flipping the idea of waste as a resource and so on. But of course, there are entrenched, entrenched interests. But I saw a wonderful figure the other day that in the cars of Europe, there is hidden 40 tonnes of gold, and that value is vast. Now, how to get those out, those tonnes of gold, is incredibly difficult. But this is a sort of fantastic, iconic figure that reminds me of how we also need to communicate. But we also not only need circular economies, we need circular thinking, integrated thinking. Silo thinking doesn't work anymore, or although I love specialists, of course, but everything connects in a connective tissue, climate, health, food systems, water. So that needs to be seen as a whole. And then, of course, the mechanisms, financial mechanisms need decarbonizing too. And it reminds us, of course, that the money is still going to the wrong places, which is why, for example, last week in Berlin, there was a referendum to take 250,000 um, uh, apartments back into public ownership. It was a provocative move, and it's raised a massive discussion about how we want to live and how you bend the market positively to bigger picture purposes. Finally, communication. I keep on saying communication. Do we focus on hope or fear? So it's back to how the story is told. Clearly, Lisbon, as an example, was a wake-up call. Could they have communicated differently? Could they have given citizens a sense that they have agency to be part of making that planet B whilst helping ameliorate planet A? A final thing, my own obsession, my own big project at the moment, a neglected sphere is the creative bureaucracy. In one sentence, what that's about is three pillars. How do you create incentives and regulations for now? How do you improve the inner life of bureaucracy so people can give of their best rather than operating in old systems? And how do they create better relationships with the, with the wider world? And our aim in a festival, it just finished uh, last week, with 19,000 visitors, was how can you celebrate and empower the unsung heroes to give more because this is a massive resource. We had 18,000 visitors last week. 21, 51% were under 34 years old and more were women than men. And I feel that was an interesting signal. And indeed, I think there is a movement in the making. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Charles Landry, for your very interesting point of view and circular thinking.